What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Pal World. In this video, I'm going to be going over the ultimate base. This means location, design, general layout, and also the reasons why. Now, first thing is first. Obviously in Pal World, you can have a maximum of three bases. I do strongly recommend that you use one base for all of your production and then the other two bases for materials. This one that we're going to be going over right now is going to be the general production layout and if you want to see the actual material farming ones then i do suggest you take a look at my ore farming guide as we use two bases for that since ore is hands down the most valid and valuable material in the game that's why that gets special treatment so let's talk about the actual production facility first of all the location for the location we want somewhere that doesn't really get raided all that often and is in a large open area now i personally have gone here just near the sealed realm of the frozen wings and the pen king dungeon reason being okay is the beach is nice and open so we've got a nice big open area here. Then, because I did this base sort of early, we have a huge amount of resources in the general area. We got loads of lumber. We have tons of Paldium fragments in the local vicinity as well. But the big one is it doesn't really get raided all that often. Now, as I progressed into better materials, I still kept this location. Again, because it doesn't get raided. Two, because it's pretty central to what I really want. And three, because I don't need to worry about the temperature in the other three zones. That's why this is kind of important. This way, we don't really need to worry and we can swap our pals around depending on what we actually want them to do. Because less pals in the base means less chances for them to get stuck and glitch out, resulting in no workflow. Now... The actual design of the base, okay? Oh, yeah, I think I mentioned, but it's up here on the uh, on the beach. But yeah, the actual design of the base is going to be using a metal foundation. If you don't have the materials to do metal or you don't have it unlocked just yet, use stone. For the love of God, do not use wood, okay? Any fire pal will burn it down. Any raid attack will easily destroy it. Do not use wood no matter what. Use stone, which you can farm here on the beach anyway if you really, really want to. Likewise, you've got tons of stone up on the mountains and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, I am quite free of rent, so I'm using metal. So we have the metal foundation, and this is going around the entire blue circle of the base sometimes a little bit further and that is just to allow me to build some extra things there then as you can see i have the defensive wall now this does not go all around the base as you can see i couldn't really like lap it there because i couldn't build a foundation here realistically i should have had my main pal base a little bit tinier north but it is what it is so we have the defensive wall going almost all the way around, other than where I needed a little tiny bit more space for the roof tiles. But either way, it's still really good protection anyway. Then on top, we also have some rocket launchers and some alarm bells. This pretty much ensures anytime I get raided, everything gets absolutely murdered. Obviously, it does burn through rocket ammo, but we are going to talk about how to make just way more than you ever need of that in a minute. Now, for the actual design, okay, we've gone full circle, and then around the circle, we've put two walls and what i mean by two walls is we've gone by two oh no i don't want to pick up wood uh, we've basically gone by two high okay so we have the main floor here then we have one wall unit and a second wall unit and then we put some roof tiles above that just to give me a little bit of extra space to work and then we have two sets of stairs leading up to it the reason for two sets of stairs is just so large pals can also get up here as well i'm currently debating on whether or not i make the roof a little bit bigger but right now i like the open design as it does also mean that i can just fly over and drop down without issue 
Now, before we start talking about the production units, let's talk about these two little walled off areas I've made. First one is just a bed area. Honestly, I'm probably going to shrink this a little bit. I really don't need this much space for a bed. And then the second walled off area is essentially just for my actual base improvement uh, uh, things. So we've got the toolbox, we've got the pylon, the snowman, the cauldron, and so on and so forth. These just improve the general base facilities. We have these closed off just because I notice pals like getting stuck on them, especially flying pals. For some reason, they are attracted to the pylon like flies around shit. I don't know why. So I've completely walled that off just so the pals cannot get near them and get stuck. Now, as you can see, we have a nice open area, and there's a reason for this. Firstly, we need open spaces around all the production units for the pals to actually take part in and work on. That's why there's a bit of a gap between them all. This way, whenever we do start working on something, the pals can easily go ahead and move on over to it. So, we have our kitchen and our medicine over here. Honestly, these are just sort of because we don't really use these all that often anymore. It's like I do already have a big supply of food and medicine, so they're just sort of there for when I need it. Medicine, uh, sorry, item repair, pals don't assist with, so we just have that right next to the teleporter so I can get in and out very quickly. Then we have the PAL uh, sphere production. So obviously there's nothing working on it right now. Some of them have been a little bit lazy and working on some more things. It's fine. I have enough spheres. And oh, never mind. That's why they're not working on it. I'm full. So let's just go ahead and start making some more, shall we? And as you can see, I do have a ton of materials. Don't worry. I have guides coming for them as well. So you can get absolutely boatloads of all of them. Super, super easy. So, we've now started some more sphere production. Next up, we have the general production line. This is basically for, you know, like arrows, swords, guns, some ammo, armor, stuff like that. Right now, I've got it making machine gun ammo. And, of course, my pals are assisting in that. So, again, we have a nice, decent gap between these just so the pals can get on either side of them. Then, last but not least, we have the weapon production line, which I just have permanently making rocket ammo. There's a few reasons for this. One, I enjoy using the rocket launcher myself, and two, it also helps for the actual base defense with the rocket launcher. Then, over here, we have the stone pit. Now, the stone pit and the logging tree area, these are ones that I will permanently swap in and out. I will only ever have one in the base at a time, just because I don't want the pals actually focusing on them when I don't need them to. Likewise, right next to them, I will have a treasure chest as well. Reason being for this treasure chest is then, when the pals start moving the materials from the section to the chest, they don't have to go very far, and they can do it much, much faster so super important there for efficiency if i do want wood i will literally just destroy this stone section and i'll create a logging section there now for our gardening we do have our four gardens tomato lettuce wheat and berry these are all located in a general area right next to the feed box the reason it's next to the feed box is then again when they start carrying the harvest away they are not going to put it in a treasure chest they're going to put it in the closest location possible which in this situation is the feed box meaning my pals will always remain fed I've decided to build a second hot spring just because San was getting a little bit low. That's mainly due to the fact I had bad food in the feed box, though. I have now replaced that. So in, you know, a couple of in-game days, I will actually destroy this spring. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. Then down here, next to the harvest areas, we do have a few beds. Honestly, don't worry about the large beds. They're kind of pointless, in my opinion. Just use the smaller, fluffy beds. They do the job well enough, and they take up way less space. And obviously, they're much cheaper on the resource production. So then against one of the walls away from all of my production, okay? I don't want these treasure chests next to any production facilities reason being i don't want the pals to bring any of the harvest or anything like that to any of these chests these are all just for my general items like ingots cloth circuits stuff like that um eggs and so on and so forth this just lets me keep it nice and organized we have our power generation and our heating and cooling right here next to the power generation as well and just sort of so they're slightly out of the way 
Then we have a, another treasure chest. This one is just for eggs. I'm not sure why there's stone in there at the minute. Let's just take that out. Normally, this is just full of eggs. So, again, I do have all my eggs incubated right now, so that's why it's empty. But I will keep all of my egg uh, incubators just here anyway, just so they're slightly out of the way and the next to the heating as well, so they get 100% incubation speed. So, when I do a big breeding binge, I can breed, you know, a whole bunch all at once and just hatch them super, super quick. Oh, I've actually got a sick pal. Okay, I will fix him in a minute. I just have to remember where I put my medicine. It's in one of those chests, but I'll find it later. So, we've got all of that laid out. Now, the reason that we have it laid out like this is, again, just for space, okay? So, if we look at it from above, there's nowhere really that pals can get stuck on. I do have two crushers made as well. That's just because I'm farming Paldium Fragments right now with all of the stone that I actually have. So, again, I do have two pals working on them, just watering them, turning them into fragments. Now, one of the things to note, okay, is I do have 20 pals available for for my base but i am obviously not using 20 pals more is not better in this situation okay only use what you need the more pals you have the more chances there are of things going wrong like them getting stuck them glitching out on each other and so on and so forth right now all i care about is handiwork all i care about is the production here i have a couple of gardeners just to, you know, ensure that there's always food going. Realistically, though, because I actually put the sandwiches and the chowder in the feed box, I could remove these and, again, just focus on handiwork. We have power generation with the Relaxaurus Lux, and then we have waterers for the gardens and the mills for my Paldium Fragments. Again, it's all about what you need. If I wanted to focus on stone harvesting, I would get rid of pretty much all of these units and just throw a couple of miners in and material carriers in. If I wanted to focus on gardening, I'd just throw gardeners in and so on and so forth. The less pals you have, the better. And obviously, when the game does eventually get more updates as well, I have all this space here for stuff to go if need be. And of course, I can also then close off the roof area. I'll probably leave this little section open so I can still drop down. But I could close this off and then still have a ton more working space as well. So again, it's all about efficiency and space. As long as your pals can get to where they need to go, you are going to be perfectly fine. And again, just completely ignored that actual spring right there. I do have one up in that corner, which they do typically use. But because my sand was a little low, I threw an extra one just to help speed the recovery of that up. But though, guys, this is pretty much the ultimate main production base. As I said, if you want to take a look at the other two bases, go ahead and take a look at my ore farming video, which describes the other two base placements that I strongly, strongly recommend. Still, though, I do hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please be sure to smash that like button and drop a comment down below as it greatly helps the channel out. And of course, if you want to see even more Power World videos, then make sure you subscribe. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.